Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Zips Weekly with head football coach Joe Moorhead. Hey, a quick reminder, the Zips on the road this week up at Mount Pleasant, Michigan. They take on the Chippewas of Central Michigan. That will be a 3.30 kickoff, another Mid-American Conference game. And also, the Zips back home on Wednesday night, November 1st. That's the big one against Kent State. Should be the best home game of the year. Hopefully, you're making plans to be there as the Zips take on the Golden Flashes. Which brings us, Coach, to Saturday's game against Northern Illinois. We have been in every game up until Northern Illinois. I talked to you after the game, and I could tell you were really disappointed on Saturday. Yeah, there, there's really no, no two ways around it. I mean, we, we just absolutely got our bus kicked in all three phases. Um, you know, been here for 18 games and, you know, have lost uh, versus teams with, with a lot more talent. Yeah. Uh, but in particular, the last 12 games where, where I think we've really become competitive and, and, and done a nice job giving ourselves an opportunity to win. But, you know, I, I, I'm really, you know, on Saturday, I was really displeased yeah. with the product we put on the field. Uh, it's been explained to the players and coaches that it's not acceptable, and, you know, it's something hopefully we won't see again moving forward. There was a couple of bright spots, Coach. You started uh, freshman Taj Bullock, and we're going to see the highlights here in a minute. Boy, that first touchdown drive, is, I think, is exactly the way you want to play football. Yeah, Taj is a very skilled young man, uh, lacks experience, uh, you know, went 19 to 34. We didn't push him. Well, I shouldn't say we tried to push him ball downfield a little bit, had yeah. some overthrows, had some protection issues, but you can see the dynamic that he brings in the run game. Uh, certainly a strong uh, strong arm, and uh, just got to work on getting him more experience. Yeah, I know he was disappointed a couple times. We'll see it here. He had some open receivers. That will come as the chemistry comes with the wide receivers. Yeah, it's, it's first start, and, uh, you know, we'll continue, you know, getting the practice yeah. reps and getting them game reps, and uh, like I said, I think he gives us the best opportunity to win moving forward. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to uh, InfoCision Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Big crowd, homecoming on campus, a lot of things going on. The Zips win the toss and they defer, Coach. And right away, uh, I think Norman's going to hit us with a big play. I'm not sure we're going to see that, but that kind of stunned our defense early. Yeah, it did. You know, we talked about it last week, uh, that they're a team that's going to play multiple tight ends, you know, run the ball between the tackles, a lot of misdirection, a lot of pullers, and we need to have great uh, gap discipline. and you know, do a good job, and we just we weren't able to do much of that on uh, Saturday. That's Trey Jones uh, jumping up and knocking that one down on a nice play, and he's played well all season long. He has. He, he and Lama, uh, you know, outside of this past Saturday, have had a really, really nice season. Now, here comes our first look at Taj Bullock, and big guy, at what, 6'3", about 225, yes, 230? Yeah, he is. And he can punish defensive backs when he squares up those shoulders. Yeah, he can. Big, powerful, strong runner, able to run through arm tackles, and you know, saw, saw a good bit of that on Saturday. Here he's going to make a nice play right in front of you, Coach. You're getting a good look at that. And here he comes again. Yeah, that was definitely a face mask that they missed there. Yeah, that's that's something I saw from the press box. Yeah, and you're right. Here he comes again. I think this is Lingard with a nice uh, nice fake and up the middle for three or four yards. and Kind of tiptoes down those sidelines, and yeah. we're going to see this from ground level, see how powerful he can be as a runner. Yeah, pin and pull, got him out on the edge, did a real nice job getting us down there. Lingard's going to get us down to about the one or two. Now they're going to option left. We haven't seen a lot of option football, but he runs that perfectly. Yeah, that's the one that actually we had against Indiana where if DJ would have pitched it, we, yeah. would, we would have scored in that overtime. So same exact play, the defensive end feathered him, made a good job, forced him to make a decision. Owen oh, Wiley comes in with the PAT, and suddenly it's seven to seven early in this football game. Yeah, you're feeling good about it at this point, and then you know, unfortunately we you know, couldn't stop him much after that, and couldn't get much, more, much going on offense till the third quarter. Saw Corey Thomas come up a nice play defensively. He's played well all season long out of Penn Hills and in, in Pittsburgh. Quarterback's a transfer, I think, from Michigan State. He ran him out of bounds there, but he had some good moments this year. He did. He had a nice game, 10 to 15, uh, you know, 100 some yards. But, uh, you know, one of two fourth down stops we had on the day, if you're looking for positives, that we, we did a nice job on fourth down. From ground level, Anderson's going to make five or six quick yards. I'd like to see him when he gets into that second level. He is really quick with good feet. Yeah, same thing with, with, with Drake and, uh, 
and Lingard got to continue feeding the, the ball to those guys and giving them opportunities. We can see what they do in space. Saw Bobby Golden there with the carry uh, a little bit earlier. Once again, it, it's really crippling for us not to have Alex Adams available, so hopefully we're able to get him healed up for this week. Here comes Bullock again. Nice fake. He's going to take that and doesn't hesitate. Takes it right up the field. Uh, we're, we're really excited about his progress. He's, he's got a very bright future. Throws a nice ball out there right in front of the Northern Illinois sidelines. And he's got a powerful arm. You can see that a few times on Saturday. Yeah, he, he can definitely put some zip on it. Big play right here. Looked like that was K.J. Martin coming up and making a hit. Tyson Durant played. He, he, you see Tyson make a few plays here. There's, there's CJ running it down from the backside. Ty, Tyson played the best of all of our guys on the back end. CJ Nunnally, I think, makes that play again. He's coming from that uh, defensive end across the formation. Yeah, he's done a real good job. Little shovel pass, Coach. Have you seen that much this year? <laughs> Not much. That was more of an underhand check down than it was a shovel pass. We did have a shovel a little bit later in the game. Lorenzo gained some, some yardage on. Yeah. Zips down at the half, Coach, and uh, you're going in at halftime. What, what do you tell the team, though? Uh, that, um, that we needed to figure out a way to yeah. be more competitive in the second half. Yeah. Well, once again, the, the, the lack of physicality and lack of effort are not going to be characteristic of this program, and, and I thought uh, Northern Illinois did a much better yeah. job. Uh, and we were coming out of the locker room. I said, hey, we can't do anything to change what happened in the first half, but we got to try to win the third quarter, got to try to win the fourth quarter, yeah. and uh, just look up and see uh, you know, where we are at that point. Exactly. We're going to take a break, come back and watch second half highlights right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter. Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly. That football coach, Joe Moorhead. We are at halftime of Saturday's game over at InfoCision Stadium against Northern Illinois. And we're going to get the football to start the second half, Coach, and I know you want to try and turn things around, but when you're down that big, sometimes you try and maybe do a little bit too much too soon. Yeah, you don't want to press. You want to, you know, take it a possession at a time. You try yeah. to trip away from it and hope you can get a score and then start getting a couple stops and kind of piece those things together. But uh, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out yeah. that way. Okay, let's go to watch highlights in that second half. And as we were going to see, the Zips are going to get the football to begin play. And I think the, sec the second TV drive we're going to see is just under nine minutes to play in the third quarter. We'll watch that a little bit later. But, Coach, you're trying to establish uh, the passing game, the running game, and you got a first-year quarterback in there. That, that can be tough. Yeah, you got a good first down there. You know, not a good completion to, to, to Gatings, and then, unfortunately, we came up short of the sticks on a fourth down. Look, that's Tyson Durant with a good stop right in front of you. Yeah, Durant had a real, really nice game. It's a bad snap, and I think that's not only really, yeah. a Kind of upends him. We need to recruit more nunnelies. That's part of our, <laughs> part of uh, you know, what we talk about all the time in our, in our, our recruit meetings. Pretty good return here by Blake Hester, who never quits. I mean, he is always moving forward and playing 100. percent Yeah, Blake Blake's a, a, an ideal team guy. All four phases of special teams, you know, contributor and scout team does a real nice job. There from ground level, we're going to see Lingard go right toward the Husky sidelines and get pushed out of bounds. Big he play. Continues, there's a the shovel pass right there. Continues to chip away, get a little bit better every game. Once again, trying to find some cohesion and chemistry and physicality up front. And, you know, the more we're able to do that, you know, the more we can utilize, you know, Lorenzo and Drake. That ball was tipped, but uh, Lingard picked it right out of the air and went upfield. And now a pretty good pass to the sidelines. Yeah, we got to get DG some more touches, too.
You see glimpses every once in a while with what Bullock can really do. This is one right here. Yeah, it's consistency. You know, I mean, we're, we're not a, a, a great, you know, third and long team, so we got to work on staying ahead of the sticks. And, you know, Common man-to-man -man here was able to get T.J. free and, and get him his first college touchdown. See his arm strength. He threw this off his back leg. Yeah. A little hot, little hide route there. Yeah. That one Wiley in, kicks the extra point, and that's our second touchdown of the game. Yes, sir. I ran again. I think this is Duran again coming up and making the hit. Yeah. You know, that we talked about after the game, one of the benefits, uh, uh, if there are any, of you know being in this situation, was able to get some young guys in the game. You saw Jaron Griffin make a stop there. He came in you know, with some of the younger guys on defense. Marcus Moore, Cam Cheatham. It was good to see some of those guys get some reps under certainly less than ideal circumstances. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of those guys uh, in the next segment. But if Adrian Norton, another guy. That kid from the Dayton area is really going to be good. Yeah, he's going to have a he's really, really good player. Caleb Anderson, another guy who usually doesn't get a ton of reps. But look again, throwing, caught, and good catch. Same thing, Lingard out in space. Got to continue to find ways to get in the ball. Defense at times had some big plays, Coach. Boy, they killed us running to the right all, all game long. Yeah, they were they were cracking with the receiver and you know getting a bunch of pullers through there and you know we uh, had to be gapped out much better there. Gonna get it to Drake Anderson and he makes a couple good moves and takes it up the field. Yeah. Gonna watch this play again yeah. from ground level. Yeah, good screen pass, you know, trying to negate that pass rush. It was it was kind of closing out on us the whole game. Playing out deep in the fourth quarter, and Bullock's going to break out of pressure and head toward the sidelines. It takes a couple guys to bring him down. Again, we're going to watch it from ground level from the end zone. Nice, good move there to give himself some extra yardage. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of having a quarterback who can run and make plays by design or, or improvisation. And Jaron Griffin right there, I was talking about. I think young kid out of Mississippi. Yeah, he was a good play. Again. Redshirt freshman, got, got, got a lot of good football in front of him. You've got a good group of linebackers, Coach, and he's just one of many. Yeah, we do, very young guy. Nick, Nick Ognenovich with a couple catches there and you know, told Coach Hammock, great job. Yep, Zips lose that one and uh, they come back Saturday up at Central Michigan. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but right now we're gonna take a break, come back, we're gonna have the coach talk about some of those young players you saw on Saturday, maybe their future is a Zip football player. So don't go away, we're back right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back to Zip's Week of Head Coach Joe Moorhead. This is a segment each week I like to talk to the coach and get his views on some of the players that played well uh, on Saturday, and then some of the young guys that are going to be really valuable as this program continues to improve. And let's start with the quarterback, Taj Bullock, and transfer from Virginia Tech. I think the fans saw enough of him Saturday. No, this guy's a player. Yeah, it's not to wet your whistle. You know, get, get excited about him. You know, big, tall, strong kid. Uh, you know, strong arm, uh, very athletic, you know, very poised. But, uh, you know, once again, there's no substitute for experience. So every practice rep, every game rep, we'll see him continue to get better and better. 
Talk about the depth of quarterback coach because you still have a couple of young quarterbacks, John Jennings out of Reynoldsburg and Steele Wassel, a young man out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. How are they progressing? They're progressing nicely. You know, we, uh, you know, those guys operate the scout team. Yeah. And then, um, you know, multiple times during the week, we go with, a, you know, a developmental portion of practice mm -hmm. where, you know, the scout team offense goes against the scout team defense just to make sure they're not spending the whole season running off a of, off of cards that, right. th that they're running our offense, running our defense, and it gets to be pretty competitive. Exactly. You've mentioned uh, Charles Kellum, the young man out of uh, Cincinnati. I think he's still uh, only a, a sophomore, uh, maybe a redshirt freshman, I think, eligibility-wise. So he's got a bright future. Yeah, he redshirted last year, got a, got a couple touches at the, uh, the end of the game this week and is a, a valuable uh, you know, piece of our special teams. But, you know, with, uh, with Zoe and Drake both graduating after yeah. uh, this season, Charles will be our only um, – returning scholarship uh, running back. So we've got a high school kid committed yes. who we can't talk about. And then, you know, we'll kind of address the remaining couple spots with portals and JUCOs. Which brings up a good point, Coach. So taking a look at maybe, you know, establishing that running back position, you're going to lose a couple seniors. With the transfer portal, what is the easiest position to pick up? Is it a running back, a wide receiver, or so I guess goes from here to here? I, I'd, I'd go the opposite. The, the, it's, it's which ones are the toughest, and, and that's offensive and defensive line. Yeah, I yeah. think there, there's a dearth and a supply of, of uh, kids at, at most of the skill positions, and including like the you know, tight ends and, and, and uh, linebackers, kind of the mid-skill positions. But the, obviously the ones that are the hardest are the ones that everybody's looking for, and that, that's the offensive and defensive line. And talking about the offensive line, we saw a couple of young kids uh, play football. Guy you're excited about, Delvin Morris out of uh, Caldwell, Texas, went down into Lone Star State and pulled him out, and you're really excited about him. Yeah, he did a little bit of everything in high school. He played offense, played defense, played a little bit of Wildcat quarterback. Uh, tremendous motor, great athleticism. You know, got to get a little more, got to get him a little heavier. Right? He's, he's light right now, you know, to, to be a full-time starter. But between he, Javon James, Jonas Mann, uh, A.J. George transferred in from uh, from Cincinnati, and then uh, you know Lawrence Seymour transferred from Miami, who's uh, ineligible this year. You know we've, we've got some really good guys, uh, you know, that are either working scout team or, or working yeah. through their eligibility. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, the spring football is going to be key in establishing that offensive line and getting those guys set for next year. Yeah, I think you know right now between you know out of all the positions, that's still the, you know probably where we're trying to find some continuity and consistency yeah. in, 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 in getting that unit, you know, uh, up to speed. And, and it, like I said, those that and defensive line are the toughest. I think we've probably recruited some more experienced guys on the, on the defensive side yeah. of the ball, and you see that in our play on Saturdays. So we're, you know, Coach Rodriguez is, you know, doing his best, and we're kids are fighting their tails off. But, yeah. you know, that's a position, obviously, where we need to make the most improvements. I looked out at the defensive line coach on Saturday and saw a couple of young kids, uh, Marcus Moore, Kewan Murphy, two big guys that are still learning the position, but uh, great potential with those yeah, two big Kwan, guys. Kewan Redshirt, freshman, Marcus Moore, I think, you know, very indicative of the type of local talent that uh, we're seeking to keep at home. You know, yeah. guys who, you know, have the ability to play at this level, and Marcus is going to be a fantastic player here. Uh, made some plays this week, and uh, his, his role continued to increase throughout the season. Yeah, you made a great point, I think, last year coach and we talked about local recruiting you want to get the local kids but number one they've got to be able to play division one football and number two they want to have to come here that's, yeah, that's those are the two things yeah there's a level of reciprocity to it i think you know through our collective experience as a coaching staff that and the number of you know nfl players we coached and, and yeah. the, the all, all you know all americans and all conference guys at this level that we, that we know what it looks like so uh number one we've got to improve as a program and you know, do a better job winning, you know, to, to make it a more attractive, uh, you know, destination. But at the same time, we're not going to lower our standards exactly. and, and, and take someone, you know, just to take them to say we took a local guy. That's that's not how you build a program the right way. Exactly. I agree 100%. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, as we said, Saturday afternoon, right back in the Mid-American Conference up at Mount Pleasant, Michigan. That'll be a 3.30 kickoff against Central Michigan. The Chippewaps coming off a tough loss to Buffalo. We'll talk about them and more right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. 
opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, each week this time, we give you a preview of the upcoming opponent. And it's brought to you each week by the uh, Hilton Akron Fairlong Hotel. Glad they're with us this week as another one of our Zips Weekly sponsors. And Coach, a long, long bus trip up to Central Michigan and Mount Pleasant. And you told me during the break, it's been a while since you've been up there. Yeah, 06, we, uh, we, we took a trip up there and uh, kept it close. I believe that's when uh, either Brian Kelly or Butch Jones was, was the head coach up there. And, you know, great atmosphere. Uh, it'll, like you mentioned, it'll be homecoming. Yeah. So, uh, be a big, be a big challenge for us. Yeah, the uh, Chippewas right now have a record of three and three. They're one and one in the Mid American Conference. They have a nice win over Eastern Michigan. And last week, they uh, got beat by Buffalo at Buffalo. So they want to try and turn that around. They've got a big quarterback, about six three, about 225, 30 pounds, which is the kind of quarterback you like. He's kind of multi-dimensional. Yeah, he does a lot of nice things. And uh, you know, the Buffalo game was close heading into halftime, and you know. Uh, Central Michigan through two pick sixes, yeah. so, so uh, you know they they uh, Coach McElwain's done a great job there. Obviously, won an SEC East title in his time at Florida, and has been you know right around you know full eligibility every single season here. You know yeah. they recruited length, they recruited athleticism, you know very physical and well coached. And as you mentioned, the, the the quarterback does a really nice job operating their system. Yeah, you take a look at their loss up at Buffalo this past Saturday. They actually uh, had more total yardage, more first downs. As the coach said, they turned it over four times and. That's a killer, especially on the road. Yeah, it's hard to win a game. I don't know whether it was three or four total, but yeah. you know the game's going to come down to explosive plays and turnover margin. And uh, you know when you turn the ball over that many times, particularly two that go for touchdowns, that's hard to overcome. Of course, they have a nice win over South Alabama, including uh, that win over Eastern Michigan. So playing at home, they're going to be anxious to get back into the uh, winning column. So that's going to be another challenge, another big Mid American Conference game. Yeah, certainly. You know Toledo's out front and, and doing an unbelievable job and in the West and you know kind of everyone else behind them is fighting and scratching and clawing to stay in, in the contention and you know um, you know certainly you know Central Michigan's right in that mix. You mentioned uh, Jim McElwain who's in his fifth year as head coach at Central Michigan former head coach at Florida as you mentioned the Southeastern Conference and they've given him time to establish that program up there at Mount Pleasant. Yeah that's what you need to do I mean if you want to do it the right way and uh, time to bring in your guys time to establish your culture and in and, and, um, you know, get your systems taught to the guy, to the to the players, and you know, usually, usually uh, for the most part, you know, patience is rewarded along those lines. So, I'm happy for Coach. He seems to be really settled in. He's done a really nice job with the program. Zips will bus up to Mount Pleasant, uh, leaving on Friday, and I'm sure there's a lot of competition, Coach, to get it on that uh, travel roster and make that bus trip. These young guys that played on Saturday now got a taste of it, and I'm sure they want more. Yeah, part particularly when you start getting into the latter part of the season and the injuries start hitting and and mounting up, you, you got to kind of dip into that, uh, you know, pool of young guys yeah. that you're trying your best to redshirt. But, uh, you know, certainly we're not going to hold anyone back if they're going to give us an opportunity to compete and win the game. What type of jump do you see uh, Taj making this Saturday? He's got one game uh, in the books, had some good moments, and now he is getting ready for his first road trip as a starter. Yeah, speaking from personal experience and from coaching a position for, you know, almost you know, 25 years, you know, you want to see the game slow down for him. Okay. And, and there's only a certain amount of um, the speed of the game that you can replicate during the course of the week in practice. But but every time you go out there in a the game, every rep, every quarter, you know, every uh, you know, it, it just everything starts to, to slow down for you. And you know, when you get to that point, the real, real good ones almost see the game in slow motion. Yeah, looking forward to watching him on Saturday up at Central Michigan. You should be uh, making plans to be at the next home game. That is Wednesday night, November 1st. Kent State will be in town for the annual Wagon Wheel Battle. We'll talk about more of that in the future weeks. But for Head Coach Joe Moorhead, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. Back here next week with more Zips Weekly. Always remember, go Zips. Thanks for watching Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling, and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. We'll see you next week. And as always, go Zips. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.